Welcome to Qatar. Welcome to the new Doha debates. The first of a series of six debates on problems the world faces today. We do not only face a refugee crisis, we also face a crisis of solidarity. We have so much achieved, we can do We will build the wall. Thank you so much. Good evening to everyone here and watching around the world. Uh, I'm excited to discuss this critical topic around the global refugee crisis. As a trained academic, however, I can't just answer a question. I have to say all the things that are wrong with the question before I can answer it. And for me, the question of refugee crisis in the global landscape is itself misleading and problematic. To talk about refugees as a crisis is to ask the wrong question at the wrong time. Rather than beginning with the entirely reasonable question of what do we do with these people who have arrived here, we must first ask an equally reasonable but far more urgent question. What are the social, cultural, economic, and intellectual conditions that led these people to our doors? Before we deliberate about what to do with Mexicans at the southern U.S. border, many of whom assume a de facto refugee status, we must instead consider the trade agreements and exploitative labor practices that actively undermine the possibility of prosperity within Mexico. Prior to wrestling with the question of Syrian refugees, we have to answer the years of American foreign policy, and we have to consider the years of American foreign policy that have helped to destabilize the region. By framing the issue differently, we not only become more intellectually honest, but we're also better equipped to arrive at sustainable solutions. We must address the crisis of citizenship. Today, we very easily and comfortably talk about our respective countries as our homes. We decide, based on the arbitrarily defined borders of the country, who is and who isn't a member. And so there you have it, folks. Mark Lamont Hill, PhD from Philadelphia, United States of America, and he brings it up straight right away. Refugee crisis, guess what? Arbitrarily, de arbitrarily defined nation's borders, right? What Mark Lamont Hill is basically saying here is that globalist, there should be no nation states. There should be no borders. Everyone should be able to come and go freely. There shouldn't be any national sovereignty at all. No citizenship, no rights of citizenship. That's basically the type of thing that he's pushing. Mark Lamont Hill, Marxist, socialist, communist, leftist, progressive, Democrat, whatever you want to call him. Pushing the globalist agenda of open borders and that everything that is wrong in the world stems from the United States and the West and their policies. Boo -hoo 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 -hoo. It was the big bad United States and their allies that have contributed to the mess and the refugee crisis all across the world. And they are the ones that perpetrated this evil, this refugee crisis. And they need to fix it because it was their policies. It was their principles. It was what they did in the beginning. It was what Spain did and France did and England did and all the other Western imperialist countries. That's what they did. That's basically the Mark Lamont strategy, the Mark Lamont, I guess, rant is what you're going to see. Anyways, folks, welcome one and all. Welcome to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. We certainly invite you to watch. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser of the Dr. Nasser Shake Show, where I give you my political prescription from my political perspective as to what's going on. And this is what you're seeing on tap today. We've got the debates from Doha Cutter, folks. That's right. Mark Lamont Hill, and we're also going to get Douglas Murray and others. Let's get back to some more ranting from Mark Lamont Hill. National community. It's important to remember, however, that the idea of the nation state is a relatively new one. Prior to the last 150 years or so, our determinations of what made people who... Let's just say over 250, okay, from the United States of America. 
the first greatest nation state ever to be born. We never actually meet in real life part of the same community as us. We're far more fluid, far more complicated. The difference between us and them, which is so often appealed to when rejecting refugees, is often, though not always, as large as we'd like to believe. To solve the refugee issue, we must first commit to reimagining citizenship in more interesting, dynamic, and practical ways. We must also consider the crisis of memory. Far too often, the people clamoring to close the borders forget that they themselves were beneficiaries of openness, either as former refugees or otherwise desperate immigrants looking for new possibilities in a new land. Rather than closing the door behind us once we've safely passed through the door, we must do the difficult but necessary work of creating sites of safety for those who come after us. We must Sites of safety. Oh, sites of safety. SOS call, SOS call, sites of safety, sites of safety. My goodness, these leftists come up with the unbelievable linguistic terms, the adjectives, the modifiers that evoke emotion. Sites of safety. Who wouldn't want to have sites of safety in the world? But like you said, all you bad people, all you bad immigrants that came before to the United States of America, now you've already come through the door and you want to Slam it shut on everybody else. We can't have the entire world enter through our doors, Mark. How many people do you let through the doors of your own home? First, it's your family. Then you got to think about everybody else. And you know what? Oh, it was a different time back then. Nobody talks about that. Nobody. These guys never talk about that. It was a different period. It was back in the 1900s. It was in the 1930s, the 1940s. and It was back then. The world's completely different now. It is complete. Don't they understand that? But they go back to that tried and true sob story. And as you saw there, we got to rethink the dynamics of the nation state. Rethink citizenship. It should be citizenship of the world. Not citizenship, God forbid, of the United States of America or Great Britain or France or Spain or Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Japan or China. No, 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 no. We have to think of citizenship of the whole world. That passport should be there for the whole world. No borders at all. We must remember who we are. We must also remember the horrors that have occurred when we have failed to properly tend to refugees. Consider, for example, in the, in the 1930s, when the U.S. and Europe refused to provide refugee status to Jewish brothers and sisters, desperately fleeing Nazi Germany. Our moral failure contributed to one of the greatest atrocities in human history. We cannot repeat such acts of moral indifference and outright evil by failing to remember our mistakes. Speaking of mistakes... So now it was a fault of the United States of America that six million Jews, okay, were killed. Wasn't Hitler's fault? No, no, he was just a nice guy. Didn't do a damn thing wrong. Nazis in Germany, they didn't do anything wrong. No, no, no. It was a fault of the big, bad Satan, the United States of America. They were the ones that were at fault. They were the ones that caused the Jews to suffer. They were the ones that did it all. That's according to Mark Lamont Hill. We must take seriously the question and the crisis of supremacy. Simply put, we live in a world where we believe that some lives are inherently worth more than others. This belief, undergirded by white supremacy, Orientalism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism, allows us to view some lives as worthy of protection and others as disposable. It allows us to see some cultures as compatible with our society and others as an inherent threat. That is so true. There are some cultures and some societies out there that are an inherent threat, not just to us. They're inherent threats to, their, to, the, to the neighbors that they're occupying in their lands. Look at what the hell's happening in Africa. Look at the skirmishes that happen in India, in Pakistan in China and other places around the world, in the Mideast. 
What the heck are you talking about? Amazing. Amazing. He just went after, basically, he's just calling the United States and the West a bunch, as he said, racists, bigots, homophobes, Islamophobes, you name it. They're world phobes, global phobes, planet phobes. The West just hates everybody. They have to rethink in the definition of what they are. To our way of life. This doesn't mean that there aren't real and tangible political and cultural differences that we must consider. We must do that. But even those differences can't be properly understood or reckoned with until we address our core biases. And speaking of biases, we must tackle the crisis of representation, particularly in the media. The media, both traditional and new forms, offers most citizens their window into the human experience. The media shapes how we identify and assess social problems. The media gives us a sense of what our available solutions are. The media tells us whose lives matter and whose don't. As long as we are beholden to a narrow range of corporate media sources, themselves committed to a narrow range of ideas and shot through with the very biases that I just referred to. Oh, you mean like MSLSD? The Clinton News Network or the Cabal News Network, CNN? Or the Never Been Conservative NBC? Or the Anything But Conservative ABC? Or all those alphabet networks? The corporate media establishment, which probably now also includes Fox News. Is that what you're talking about? All those guys, that's where we're getting the news from? Those are there shaping our views? Is that what you're talking about, Mark? We will struggle to think outside the constraints of the current moment. So what do we do? The million dollar question that all academics hate to answer. We must resist. We must address each of these crises with the belief that organized people can and do defeat organized power. That means we vote, we march, we think, we boycott, we teach, we write, we sing, we debate, all in ways that undermine the current power structure and create the possibility for freedom and safety for refugees around the world. Thank you so very kindly. So there you have it, Mark Lamont Hill giving his passion rant of five minutes in these debates coming from Doha, Qatar. And we're going to get to hear from, you know, Murray. We're going to hear from a whole host of other um, pundits that are there on the stage. We're going to continue that. But for now, we thank you for taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. Links above and below. Check those videos out. My final thought, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.